brand new season. Um, uh, kind of sit around and wait to see who we play. Obviously, we know it's one of two teams, and luckily for for them and us, uh, we all played each other here in the last ten days of the season. So uh, we're we're there, the matchups, the systems, the the thought process, the scouting reports are pretty fresh in our minds. Um, so it doesn't make the the, 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 pr the preparation work any easier. It just makes you a little more familiar with it. Uh, but happy as heck that, you know, for the last couple of years, we'd be like getting ready to get on a on, on travel today. Uh, and uh, being able to give our guys uh, Sunday and Monday completely off, um, we're, we're going to gather here today. We, they're on spring break. We haven't done anything. Some of the guys have been home with their families, uh, the guys that, that obviously have access to their families, uh, and just uh, just relaxing. So we're going to gather here today and and uh, give it a go and, and start all our preparation. Frank, you kind of mentioned it. Uh, you know, the past three years, you guys have gone to this tournament knowing win or go home. Is it kind of a, a relief or uh, just a different feeling knowing that no matter what, you got games to play next week? Unless you know something, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about any guarantee until, you know, Sunday night. Uh, Sunday nights, uh, when you find out, you know, I, I, it, it, I'll say this. If winning 24 games, 11 BCS conference games, uh, finishing third in a BCS conference, uh, is not good enough to get into an NCAA tournament, um, I need to go back to bouncing. And I don't say that jokingly. I mean that seriously. It's, uh, uh, but, you know, there's only one way you guarantee you're playing in the postseason, and that's win your regular season conference championship or figure out a way to play Saturday night and win. Uh, outside of that, there's no guarantees. Do we feel good about what we've done? Absolutely. Uh, I, I can't think of too many teams in the country that can claim that they have won nine games away from their home building. Um, uh, and uh, but it is what it is, you know. We we regular season's over with. I'm so proud of our guys for what they did, how they they fought, how they grew, um, how they they answered the bell. We never went on a losing streak, which is what kills a season. Um, you know, we fought and fought and fought. You know, right in the crucial part of the year, our team got hit with the flu, and it's unbelievable. It's 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 just uh, you know, we, why can't we get hit with the flu in November or December? You know, we get hit with the flu in the home stretch, and and that impacted our guys. But you know what? They rallied the troops. They they figured out a way to to stay the course, and that's why now these two days off so important for our guys because those last three games they stressed our guys. Not just mentally, but physically, they were real taxing. So, um, um, it's uh, I, I I got a feeling from texting and stuff with them that uh, that they're excited for for our practice today. Regardless of who you play, it's a team that has handled you uh, recently. So, how do you your players kind of approach the idea of if it's like Georgia, they beat you twice, Mississippi State just beat you down there, but a team that has beaten you uh, the last time you faced them? Well, if they've beaten us 25 and 25, Phil, then we'd be trying to figure out how to change everything we're doing. You know, we, we're up 63-60. Uh, you know, and what, four minutes to go, three minutes to go in the Georgia game? And let me plead the fifth on that game right now because there's a lot of things about that game that if I speak on, I'm going to get in a lot of trouble for. Uh, which I've made my peace with the people I need to make it with. Uh, but, you know, they're, they're, they're old, they're physical, they're big. You know, when they're big, they don't have two seven-footers, but they got two six-foot-nine, 240-pound guys, and they got big, strong, old guards. And, uh, you know, that's Georgia, and they're a good basketball team. Uh, and obviously, you know, we, we were down two over there, I don't know, six minutes to play in the game, and we had a lead with three minutes to play in the game here, and we just we weren't able to close out either one. Then Mississippi State here, we won by double figures, and down there they were up double figures pretty much the whole second half. So um, uh, we'll see. It's 
brand new season, all, all that. You know, last year we, we beat Georgia with six and a half players and dominated them at home. And then they beat us in the conference tournament. So it's, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. At, at this time of year, you, you're not worried about what happened in January and February anymore. It's brand new season and everyone's excited. And, uh, and you take on the next challenge in front of you and, and you trust in who you've become over the course of the year. Uh, and winning and losing during the year becomes irrelevant at this time of year. You talked about leading into the season that Dwayne didn't care what role you gave him. He just was going to do the best for, for y'all. And obviously, how nice is it in that regard to see him reach 1,000 points in the last game and then get named six men of the year today? Yeah, I'm, I'm so proud of him. It's, uh, you've heard me say this many times. He's a stud. You know, In, in a day and age where, where most uh, folks in his age group they're concerned with me, 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 me. Uh, he's one of the guys that's concerned with we, 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 we. And uh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm real, real happy for him. Because I never told him, Dwayne, you know, let's bring you off the bench and make you the sixth man of the year. I think that's selfish. I think that would be a selfish, a ploy on a selfish trick to get him to do what I wanted him to do. He, that was never part of the conversation. He did it for what's best for this team based on what I thought. That says a lot about him. And then for him to accept his role and to play the way he did to help the third best team in the conference, um, uh, I'm glad he was rewarded for being the selfless person that he is. It's, uh, uh, he's, he's, I'll say it again, he's a stud. He, he's a kid that uh, he, he's all about the right things, or he's about all the right things. And uh, um, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy that he's on our team. I'm happy I get to call myself his coach, and I'm happy that he was rewarded by our peers for, for his efforts. Frank, uh, the last couple of years at the SEC tournament, you guys have, had, have won a couple of games. And these guys have won a couple of games. Do you think that gives you an edge that they know what it's like in this kind of atmosphere to win games? Absolutely. Does it help you win? No. But in postseason, that's when, when a lot of folks talk about um, – uh, by the way, I just – I got to turn my phone off real quick because you guys are some great tweeters. You're tweeting before I finish my sentence. That's pretty impressive. Um, the last couple of years, we've been able to have success in games in the conference tournament. Um, that is, you see, postseason basketball is completely different than regular season basketball. It's two different animals, mentally, physically, emotionally. It's two completely different animals. And our guys can reach back into the, the experiences so they understand how to manage what's in front of them. Uh, you know, when you're in the regular season, you're consumed with getting better every day. Right now, we're not consumed with getting better every day. The postseason, you're consumed with figuring it out today. That's it. Uh, um, and they've had to reach back into their bag of tricks here that they've gathered information over the last couple of years on how to manage those emotions. And... Uh, and it's worked, you know, that experience that we've had is going to be real helpful for our basketball team. Does that mean we win? No. But it allows them to understand what's in front of them. Uh, Franco, with Michael, how are you guys going to handle him this week? Do you think he could practice? And, you know, I really you probably won't make a call until Friday, but how much will the extra rest help him for this weekend next? Yeah, we're not going to have him do anything probably till we'll see about tomorrow. I doubt it. Probably try something Thursday. Uh, my my selfish my plan is for him to rest this week. That's my selfish plan. But I'm not the good man upstairs. I don't control healing. That's up to uh, you know everyone's body. And uh, and like I said the other day, if he feels where he can play, he's going to want to fight me if I don't let him play. And uh, and I'm getting too old to fight. Uh, so. Uh, but that, that's, you know, there's my plan, there's his plan, and then there's God's plan. 
His plan is to play on one leg. My plan is we got to protect him. And then there's God's plan, which, you know, that's the one that we just got to follow and let the healing process take place. Going with Michael again, just him being named SEC Player of the Year. I mean, how proud of you are him? And is that he was the have... SEC Player of the Year? Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, oh, first God, team. Wow. <laughs> Good for him. Yeah. Uh, that's. I'm I'm happy he was rewarded. He he had a heck of a year. I mean, he. Uh, you know, we, we became a good basketball team. Uh, we became a very successful SEC basketball team. And when you do that, your players, you know, when you're in seventh, eighth, tenth place, okay, you can argue that your team wasn't good enough, so your players can't be good enough. Uh, when you end up in third place, well, it's hard to argue that your players weren't good enough. And uh, uh, he – he was a big, big part. I've said it from the word go. We've built this program on his courage from day one, his passion from day one. And uh, as he's grown as a player, as he's grown as a person, we've become a better basketball team. As we have gotten other guys uh, that are willing to fight like he fights, uh, we've become a better basketball team. So I'm, I'm ecstatic for him. He, he's worked so hard. Uh, you know, and privately, stuff that you guys don't know and will never know about. He and I had some real battles. But that's part, it's like raising my child at home. I got battles with him every day. That's not a bad thing, that's a good thing. That's two people that are trying to figure out how to, how to get together and do things the right way. And, and, and he's been awesome. He's, he's had a heck of a senior year, and I'm, I'm real, real, I'm happy for him, and I'm happy for his teammates that they were willing to help him grow so he can become the player that he was this year. Report that you have a contract extension through 2022. Just want to get your thoughts on um, getting that done, apparently. I, whoever reported that, you need to go ask that guy that. I got no idea. I, I, had, I had a conversation with Ray Tanner yesterday morning. It's the first one I have. You know, I, I have. Whoever's leaking that story, you guys need to go find him and ask him those questions. I, I got no idea where that's coming from. I'm excited that Ray Tanner asked. Like every year when the season's over, I meet with Ray Tanner. For the last three years, I've met with him as soon as the conference tournament was over. This year, like we didn't play till Friday and we were off Sunday and Monday. He said, Frank, can we meet Monday? I said, absolutely. I'm doing nothing. I'm bored. If I stay home, my wife's going to hate me. So let's, you know, let's do something productive. And uh, we visited on all the topics that we always visit on. And that came up. And I'm happy that he brought it to me for me to start figuring out uh, the future. I'm ecstatic about it. But I had no idea that there's an offer on the table. I, so whoever the source is, they need to ask that person to reveal, because obviously, there were numbers and everything in the in that report, and I know Dave wrote it. Uh, they need to ask that person because I'm not aware of it. I haven't seen. I, how can I agree to something I haven't seen, Phil? Coach, not talking about the offer, but just the season in general. How gratifying is it to be at this point with this program? I know you don't put like where you want to be in year number four, but to be in this position where you guys are on the verge of securing an NCAA berth, how gratifying is it for you? I'm just happy you're asking me that question. You're not gonna let forget, are you? No. <laughs> I give him credit for asking questions. That's that's awesome. I tell like I tell my players all the time. The older I get, not only do I look like an elephant, but I got the mind of an elephant. It's uh, uh, I, I'm I'm that's you know when when you take on a journey, there's no guarantee that there's success. There's none. You have no idea when you take on a job whether you're going to find success or not. You just roll up your sleeves and, and, and you do your job and you dwell on past experiences to try and handle situations. And you got to, you, you, me, I shouldn't say you, the person that, that takes the job in this situation, me, I have to be willing to grow within the job, not just come in and say, well, this is how we do it and plain and simple, because every job's different. Um, I, I'm, 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 I'm ecstatic 
that we're where we're at right now as a program. It's because uh, uh, winning 24 games, think about everyone talks about the great history of this program, which it's there. You can't deny that. We just won the most regular season games in the history of the program. Think about that. Four years ago, would you have said that was going to happen? You know, I, I, knock on wood, Sunday night, they put that name on the board. That's for a select few. That, there's 352 of us now. There's only, what's that, a fifth? My math is getting bad. Is that a fifth, a sixth of all teams in the country? Have the opportunity to play there. And you got to understand, some of those spots are taken, not by the so-called best teams, but by people that won conference tournaments. And uh, so only a select few get to go to that. Uh, for us to be able to be there, it's a testament to my staff that came with me and they were willing to be patient and fight and build with me to the players that believed in us, Ty Johnson. I, I don't speak about Ty as much as I should. You know, Ty was a real good player that could have gone to a lot of other places when he decided to live Villanova and he chose to come here. You know, Ty Johnson, we've talked enough, not enough, but we have spoken about, you know, the Mikes and the Sendarius's and those guys that believed in us, the P.J. Dozier's that just came on board this year. So proud of those people that were in their lives that trusted in us for us to coach them. And so proud for them to be willing to come in here and take on the challenges because we told them, we were honest, it's not going to be pretty now. It's going to be hard. And there's no guarantee at the end. The one thing that we can guarantee is that when, whenever the time comes, you and us are going to have an, a, a bond for life. That's, that's the one that we can promise. And, and those guys that have stayed the course, man, and fought and fought and fought, uh, those families, those coaches, the Zach Norris's of the world, the, the Ricardo Priesters of the world that believed in us from – they didn't have to believe in us. It's not like we're from here. And those guys believed in us when we got here. Big country, Dewan Thornwell, for, for that guy – to believe when everyone else in the state was telling him not to come here, and Dewan Thornwell said, "My son gonna play for Frank." My he could, Sanderis was basically his son. He's playing for Frank, and I'll never forget those people. Those are people that be our success right now is a direct connection to every one of them folks. Uh, and uh, you know, like I've told you guys before, I get to sit here and talk about it, but it's. Every one of them different folks I've been mentioning, it's their commitment and their belief in giving us a chance that has allowed to get us to this point. I, Bruce Ellington just texted me, he needs six tickets for Friday. <laughs> My God. Frank, um, you've talked about how these guys have fought. We've seen them you know, fight close games against LSU and and on and on this year. I'm wondering if that game against Arkansas, given a couple of losses coming in, South Carolina doesn't traditionally play well in that place there, if that was as gratifying and gritty a performance as maybe they've had this year. Yeah, I mean, it's – you don't want to have losing streaks. That's number one. Losing streaks can crush your season. That, that's what hurt. Losing a game doesn't hurt you. A losing streak is hard to overcome. You know, we lost two in a row. We lost to Kentucky, who handed us one here, and then went to Missouri and lost, and came home to play Florida. And Florida's playing probably their best ball of the year, and they're good. And that's not a team that our school has had a lot of success against. And uh, in a game that we were down, 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 we never gave in. We never caved in to, to the difficult moment, and we overcame. And now you follow that up with now at the end of the year, you go to Mississippi State. Obviously, you shoot 30% from the field. You're not going to win. Come back home, have a heartbreaking loss to Georgia, have a quick turn. And, and for our guys to go out and perform at Arkansas, in a place that not too many people win, against a school that we haven't had a lot of success against in 20 years, um, says a lot about how resilient these kids are. They, they don't give in. You know, they, they, the easiest thing to do was, you know, get on that plane and go and say, man, I'm still crushed about that loss and Mike ain't playing. I'm tired and, you know, holy cow, we can't beat these guys. That was never an option 
that, that those emotions that was never an option and uh and that's that's a credit to those kids how resilient they are how, the, the trust and belief that they have in the work that they've put in and in each other uh they they took advantage of another opportunity and uh, uh you know we we the last two days everyone has felt better because of what those kids did on raymond doby is it as simple as his practice habits have improved that you've allowed him to get more minutes or is there something that that he's brought to the lineup that you've wanted to try and get out there on the floor a little bit more? Well, with Mike out, it opens up minutes because Mike was playing three, but he'd also started to play a little bit of four. Uh, so it, op it opened up minutes for somebody to fill in. I thought Justin Mackey filled him in pretty good when he was out there. And I thought Ray Doby obviously uh, played well. Ray's a freshman. and. He's been backing up Mendogas and got beat out early in the year by Chris. Uh, so, you know, his minutes are here and there, and, and he's trying to figure out how to – see, we live in a world right now, and I think you understand this better than a lot of people, and I mean that seriously. I'm not joking because the way you follow high school basketball recruiting and have followed it, you know, when these kids get to college as freshmen um, – they're all told that this is easy. Oh, you're going to go there, average 20 points, 10 rebounds a game, da, 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 da. And then they show up, and they can't even get in practice, let alone a game. And then they're vulnerable. So now they go back and talk to the people in their life that they trust, and those people tell them, uh, just get through the year. At the end of the year, we'll get you out of there. Da, 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 da. Frank don't know what he's doing. He don't like you. He's got the, that guy's his favorite, whatever. Those are the conversations that are had. So now these kids are freshmen, and they're trying to battle all this stuff internally and trying to figure out, like, is Frank on my side or is Frank against me? Because I came here to play. I didn't, came here to, I didn't come here to sit. And I think all those things are stuff that these kids at this age, they battle. And it takes time. Some of them eventually figure it out that uh, our staff is trying to help you. We didn't recruit you to fail. We're trying to teach you the game. We're trying to help you become a man. I think he's figuring that out. He's been – he. if you remember a couple of weeks ago, he was starting to get consistent minutes, and then he got hit with the flu. And then he spent four days where he couldn't even drink water. And let alone, he obviously couldn't practice. And then he came back, and he didn't practice real well. Uh, but then he was able at least to eat and stuff for a couple of days. And uh, and I thought the day before the Georgia game, I, Friday, I thought he was pretty good in practice. We didn't go long, but at, when I left, I went home that day. I felt good about our team. And I was like, okay, Ray was engaged. Ray had life in him again. Uh, and with Michael's absence, I had to find, you know, and then Limonis picks up two fouls like that. Uh, so now we, we got to go into the bench and, Credit him. Credit him. That pass he made to Limonis when Arkansas was in that run, we don't have another player on our team that makes that pass. I, I couldn't believe he made it because we've had that opportunity all year because we kind of teach it. But we've had, we haven't had a guy attempt to pass. And Ray went out there and threw it like, this is what I do. And I, I was sitting there and I was like, wow, look at him. Because it takes courage in that situation. To be able to, it's like that quarterback that throws that ball to that pocket and he trusts that that ball's going to get caught. He made that pass and, you know, it could have gone out of bounds and they were on the run, but credit him for having the courage to make that play. Frank, Sin also got a defensive player of the year, or yeah. all defensive team nod. Just how good was his defense this year and how good was he for the team? Yeah, it's, it's, that shows his growth. You know, he came here as a top 40 player in the country. No one said he came here because he was a great defender. No, no, no. He came here because, oh, he's real good. He can score. And now his, my peers, the guys that he coaches against, voted him as a defensive player, you know, first top five defenders in the conference. And, and we pride ourselves in player growth and defending. That's the two things that we want to be known for. And Sindarius has bought into everything who we are. Uh, and, and, you know, if he would have shot the ball better during the course of the year, maybe he's an all-league player, you know. But he didn't. That's okay. But he came here not as a guy that anyone ever said, well, oh, Sin's going to be a lockdown defender. Well, you guess what? Three years later, the other 13 coaches in the league thinks he's one of the best five defenders in the league. 
in a league that's real good. That says a lot about his growth. And we've gone from, like, like you know, when I got here, there were three teams that were in the bottom of the league. Uh, my first year, there were three teams that were in the bottom of the league. Two years later, one of us has made a move up the standings. I th- and I'm not trying to put people down. That's why I'm not sharing school names because I don't speak about other schools. That's how it has a lot to do with Cinderella Stornwell. His growth, it's the three years he's been here. His growth, who he is as a person, his willingness to engage in doing the difficult things uh, to help us become a winning team. He's, that's, I, I'm, I'm glad he also was rewarded because that's, we spent a lot of time in defending and he has bought in, him and Dwayne have bought into our defensive concepts from day one. And uh, uh, to know that Dwayne's six man of the year and sends all defensive team, that's very, re- that's very rewarding to me. Last question, Chris. Uh-oh. I know there's nothing you can do about it <clears throat> because they could play this thing on the moon and it wouldn't change. But how do you other coaches feel when you go to what's considered the Kentucky Invitational, whether it's in Nashville or wherever, <laughs> and if you get a chance to play them, whether it's Saturday or Sunday, you know it's going to be 20,000 blue clads and whoever else. So. Uh, or 18,000. How, how do you other coaches kind of uh, approach the tournament knowing that you know, Kentucky is going to be there with their, with their crazies? I, Phil, this is what I know. I was – Jamel Martinez played for us in high school. Jamel went to Kentucky, helped him win a national championship. Allen Edwards played for us in high school. Allen went to Kentucky and helped him win a national championship. I've sat in them stands, and I've worn blue, and I've rooted for BBN. I hope they come out and support us Friday night. We'll worry about playing them and having to deal against their incredible following if that's what the plan is on Saturday. We need them to help us on Friday. So they can wear their blue. I totally understand. I just hope that they're on our side Friday night. That's They're on our side. That would really, really help us. I, I, and I hope their fans understand that obviously it's hard for me to root for Kentucky right now, but I've been a part of two of their national championships. <laughs> and I hope they take that in consideration because they're going to come Friday. I hope they take that in consideration when they choose who they're going to root for. That I don't know if Georgia's ever put a, a player on their program to help them win a national championship. I, two, two. And not on the same team, 90 Three, four, and then Allen in 96. Two. So, uh, did Jamel win one? Jamel, Jamel, uh, Jamel, when they lost to Duke in that crazy shot, uh, maybe they didn't win one with Jamel. He was part, him and Mashburn were Patino's first two signings there. So, um, so maybe they only won one, but two, two guys, Phil. So, hopefully, there are fans just for one day. We can use 18,000 fans in there Friday night. Thank you.